you are going to meet one of the great watercolor masters. Please welcome Keiko Tanabe. Wow, we are so honored to have you, Keiko. Hi, good morning, Eric. So good nice morning. to see you, as always. Thank nice you so much for inviting me today. Well, it's uh, it's a beautiful day here in Austin, Texas. Where are you? Uh, I'm in San Diego, uh, San Diego. North, North San Diego County. Yeah, it's okay. a beautiful day today here as well. And you're from Japan originally. Yes, I am. I'm from Japan, the city of Kyoto. Uh, uh, we, we'll have to go paint there someday. I have I've not been to. Japan. Oh, I really hope you will someday. I'd like that. You and I had a wonderful experience. Um, kind of, I think it was kind of when we, uh, right around the time we first met. You were on the faculty of the Plein Air Convention for our watercolor right. stage. Yes, and, it was in Santa Fe. And Santa Fe, and then uh, Pierre at Sennelier had uh, had me come by his booth, and he he basically videotaped me doing my first watercolor, which was a disaster. <laughs> oh no no i wish i could show you my very first watercolor painting yours is much much better <laughs> <laughs> well i don't know about that well uh what are you going to do for us today You're obviously going to do something in watercolor well yes uh well as you know i'm an avid planner painter i like to capture the sense of place sense of time well since it's harvest season i think i'm going to do something that's um that shows harvest season with the oh. colors and atmosphere Okay, excellent. All right, so you're going to do a painting for us today, and and that's excellent. And uh, we're excited about this. So we'll we'll get right back to you. I'll make a couple of quick announcements, and then we'll uh, we'll return. Well, thank you to Keiko Tanabe for being our guest today. I'm Eric Rhodes, publisher of Fine Art Connoisseur and Plant Air Magazine. Thank you for tuning in. If you are here for the first time, thank you, thank you, thank you. If you've been one of the people who's been here now, this is day number two hundred and thirty nine. Thank you for that. I know there are some people who've never missed a single broadcast. You guys are troopers. I really appreciate that. Uh, I, I'm trying not to miss any myself. Uh, so we're here uh, trying to keep our head in the game, trying to stay positive and upbeat and focus on things that are uh, that are important to our lives and to our, our state of mind and to our immune systems, not not getting all uh, brought down by all the craziness going on in the world right now. And that's why I created this broadcast every day at 12 noon. And then also every day at 3 p.m., we're doing samples of some of the well over 600 art instruction videos that we've created over the years. Today is no exception. Today we have uh, Keiko Tanabe is going to be on twice. So you're going to see uh, a little bit of a demo today on, on this 12 noon Eric Rhodes Live. And then uh, at 3 p.m. today, you're going to get another chance to say, Keiko, uh, she's going to do a little piece from her video, Storytelling with Watercolor. And there's, of course, an interview there. You'll be able to get to know her. Uh, we put these out every single day, seven days a week, and they are on YouTube and Facebook. And all you got to do is search the word Streamline Art Video. And uh, when you find Streamline Art Video, you're going to find YouTube or Facebook uh, I, I, they're, they're going to show up in YouTube or Facebook. All right. So that sounds good. I want to uh, give away some prizes. Uh, today we're giving away, I should probably just go get this. Will you hang with me? Now mine is, mine is a little paint covered, but this is called an easel brush clip. I think you can see it on the side there. Uh, it's an easel brush clip. And the idea is that it, <clears throat> it clips on your easel, right? And you can keep paintbrushes in it. And uh, I obviously, if you look at my my easel, I've got <clears throat> tons of paintbrushes over there uh, with all my paint. But I, you know, to to go through tons of paintbrushes is not necessarily easy. And so what I do is the ones that I'm using the most, I get them right there at my eye level. I clip them onto my easel, and uh, and I pull out the ones that I need. So today I'm giving this away, and the winner is. Um, G.V. Meyer from North Carolina. All right. Thumbs up and applause, you guys, for G.V. Meyer. You're getting I, – I will send you a new one. You don't need to get my paint-covered easel brush clip. All right. And uh, tomorrow, uh, another great prize. We're going to give away the Plen Air Magazine apron. I wear this religiously when I paint. And uh, just kind of keeps the paint off of me. And uh, my wife says I have two kinds of clothes, right? 
two kinds of clothes, paint the clothes that haven't got paint on them and paint clothes that uh, have, uh, haven't got paint on them yet and clothes that have paint on them. Ah, all right. Uh, a reminder that uh, you can follow me and I would appreciate a follow on Instagram uh, and of course, Facebook. Uh, you go to Eric Rhodes Publisher on Facebook. Eric Rhodes, I can't follow you back. I've got like, I don't know, a lot of followers beyond the 5,000 I'm allowed, but I am not allowed to follow you back. I've resisted turning it into a business page because I like to be able to see what people are posting. And uh, I can't do that in a business page environment. So anyway, I've not done that. But Eric Rhodes Publisher is a business page. And so you can see you can go there and sign up for that, too. And of course, Instagram. And then, of course, we would love it if you go to YouTube and uh, you subscribe so that you're getting these every day. These You will get the 3 p.m. and the 12 noon every day. If you go to YouTube, you'll also find 239 days worth times two, right? Because we've got the twice daily broadcast, different ones. Uh, lots of video uh, that we've done over the over the last 239 days, art marketing, lots of interviews, lots of other things. Just go there and subscribe. And of course, we're trying to get over the, uh, the, six, the 60,000 hump. We're real close to 60,000. And uh, we would like to get there so we can then target 70 and then 80 and then 90. And at 100, we get a plaque. So, you know, uh, every single day, um, the these broadcasts are reaching a total of 10,600 people uh, on an average day. Now, that's that, what that means is an average day, meaning uh, there are people watching it live in different platforms, right? Some are watching live on Facebook or YouTube or Instagram. It's only going to show those numbers where you're watching. And then there's the repeats. And that's where all the viewing takes place is the, the repeats, you know, during the night, uh, throughout the next couple of days. And with so within a typical week, we get about uh, 10,600 viewing. And I think we just added to that. I think it's 13,000 because of something we added on Instagram. But uh, it's somewhere in that range. And so if each of you that hasn't done this yet would go to uh, to streamline art video on YouTube and just hit the subscribe button, we'd go up 10,000 instantly. That would be pretty cool. Now, there's no reason for you to do it other than because it would be a cool thing for us. I got to be upfront about that. But it will bring you these things automatically. Uh, so it'll pop up in your screen, say Eric is live, and you need to, to go into that. Now, uh, the plein air salon art competition is going to end here uh, at the end of the month. Uh, Thanksgiving's coming up. You guys are going to get busy. You're going to have uh, possible gatherings. Uh, some, are, some are not. Uh, but please know that you have a chance to win $30,000 and the $15,000 grand prize shown here with Dave Santiani's. And uh, that could be you. And, and usually the people who win these things are never expecting to be the one to win. And so uh, get go ahead and get entered. You can enter as many paintings as you want. They don't have to be fresh. Uh, every judge likes something different. And uh, so check out the judges. Go to plenairsalon.com. Now, um, I should also mention to you that uh, tomorrow uh, we're going to have Deborah Joy Grosser on the show at 12 noon. And tomorrow, uh, Deborah is releasing a new video with us, and we're going to talk about that and show you a demo. But also, she is the uh, president of the American Impressionist Society. You're going to learn about that. So that's tomorrow coming up on this show. Now, the big thing that's happening uh, is that Watercolor Live is our big big worldwide event. Uh, we already have, uh, it's not till January, already have about 600 people signed up. And it is a world gathering of the top watercolor artists and the people who want to watch them worldwide. Uh, our last live event, uh, we had many, 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 many hundreds, uh, oh, well over a thousand. I think it was 1,500, 2,000, something like 1,500, I think. And, uh, and we had 30... 27 countries watching. And so uh, anyway, this is going to be huge. And we put together this because uh, on our other events, we don't have separate stages like we do at our live events. And so we couldn't do a watercolor stage at, for instance, at Plein Air Live or Realism Live. And so we, we're doing uh, uh, watercolors. And we've added some. Uh, so Schwang Lee is going to be on the, on the faculty. Uh, uh, Birgit O'Connor. Ian Stewart. There's, some of these are, Ian is from, I believe, Ireland, and Agnes, Agnes McGowan is from Scotland. 
Uh, we also have uh, Daniel Marshall, Thomas Schaller, Andy Evenson, some of the best teachers in the world, really. Stephen Zhang, Suni Warren, Matthew Bird, Pablo Rubin, who was on the other day from Spain, Mario Robinson, Lauren McCracken, our friend Keiko Tanabe, who is going to be on with us today, Joseph Zabukvich, uh, Jean Peterson, who loves to play with interesting shapes and mixed media and so on. She's a lot of fun. Uh, John Seliman, uh, Michael Holter, Brenda Swenson, uh, Kim Macheco. Um, I got, I did Agnes already. I did Michael already. And uh, let's say Linda Daly Baker. So that's at Watercolor Live. And if you sign up before uh, the 6th of December, you're going to save a hundred bucks. All right. So that's watercolorlive.com. Make sure you go there. Now, our guest today is a fabulous painter and uh, she just recently released this DVD. It's called Storytelling with Watercolor. It's got a couple of different demos in it. Here's uh, one of the paintings in there. And uh, then another one uh, that she's done recently is called Painting Sunlight. And that's a close-up of that painting. Uh, but you can see some of her work here. I'm going to just show you that. I'd love to paint that scene. I'd love to be there. That is so spectacular. And uh, just look at the, the delicacy of this, this beautiful work. That's amazing. That is beyond amazing. Just gorgeous. Look at this winter scene. Anyway, please, uh, oops, please welcome Keiko Tanabe. Keiko, are you back? Yes, I'm here. That. You're here. Uh, uh, back in my studio. <laughs> All right. Terrific. Well, uh, we're going to go ahead and let you get started because uh, I want to make sure you have plenty of time. And uh, so now this is nice. We can see your, your palette and your Yeah, I'm getting ready. Canvas. And I'm okay. ready. Why don't you start out by telling us about your colors, your brushes, your panels. Oh, okay, sure. Um, here I have my palette. Uh, this is the palette I use even in my studio, but I mainly for outside. But today I'm using almost the same size that I use outside, so I'm using my planner palette. And this one can hold 16 colors. Um, I think it's a very basic, um, you know, the, uh, the choice, uh, choice wise. So I have my yellows right here, and an orange, and reds, and blues, and some browns and then some other colors that I like. Uh, these are mainly my uh, the different type of types of greens. So this is my palette, and uh, I, I like the size. I can hold it in my hand. Um, it's very compact. And my brushes, I have a variety of brushes, but actually I always say to my students, I only need two to make a painting. So why two? Because my painting process is usually two steps. I do the wash in the beginning and I finish uh, with uh, details, dogs and details. So the first part of the painting, I normally use something like this or this or this, so depending on maybe the size of the, uh, the paper. And so that's why that size, size varies. And the second step, I, I would choose something a little smaller and then maybe a little different type of hair, something like this. So. Actually, I have a many, but like I said, I only need two to and, finish. And, and Maybe my main brush is an easel brush two. clip sitting there. Today. Sorry, Eric. I said the most important question was, do you have an easel brush clip sitting there for your brushes? Oh, oh yes. I was going to tell you. See? Oh, you do? You <laughs> I, was I don't need it today, but that was risky. I, could, I have I several have areas, and I use one inside because this is a brush holder right here. Yeah. Right. So, uh, but usually I use it outside. It's very, very handy, and I, I can't live without it. So, thank you, Eric. <laughs> Wonderful product. Okay. All we right. have people watching from all over. We have Brazil, the Philippines. Wonderful. Canada. Welcome, everybody. Oh, man. I'll, I'll read them out from time to time as they pop in. I know once I start okay. talking about them, everybody starts. Oh, I'm, I'm already doing things. So I, I, I like Eric. keeping conversation going. Eric, I really enjoy talking with you always. Uh, and also the our audience. So um, I was just reading this part of the paper to demonstrate a little different technique. And I'm really excited to be on the faculty for the Watercolor Live. 
And what I'm planning to do is to show you um, a demo, complete demo. But today, I'm going to just um, show you uh, just a little, um, I'm just going to let you taste a little bit of what I'm going to show you and what I got to like. So I'm going to be talking about other techniques and cutters and why I choose these techniques and cutters to make my own painting. But some of those techniques, that's what I want to show you a little bit of today. And one is a very, um, this is really unique when you use water media. Uh, you, something you cannot do if you use something else. So that is uh, the wet and wet. I think this is one of the most uh, important techniques all watercolor is needed uh, to learn. And uh, so wet and wet means you paint into the wet paper. So that's why I wetted the paper right here. And I'm sure if you use watercolor, you know what it means. So I'm going to try to drop a color inside. So I just mix this uh, purple and just drop it inside. And actually, the brush doesn't have to uh, has to uh, have to touch the paper. You can just drop it, or you can actually put it in, put the paint inside uh, manually with a brush. Yeah. And then just after that, you just watch and enjoy how the paint um, spreads into the wet area. So uh, that's one technique. It's called the wetting wet. Another one is um, this side. I'm going to do uh, something similar. I'm going to just drop the paints. But of course, the paper is dry, so it's not going to paint doesn't spread. And of course, if you paint like this, you can really uh, control uh, where you want your paint to go. So um, this way, you don't have control, but it's fun. Uh, this you have total control. Uh, this is also fun as well. But it's the effect, it's the outcome that it's very important because I believe um, by knowing which technique you want to use in your painting. Um, can create a totally different uh, atmosphere and a mood in your painting. So it's really important as an artist, we know what kind of techniques you want to use. So today in my painting demo, I like to show you mainly the wet and wet technique, but also I use um, the dry, and this is a dry technique. And so wet and dry, dry and dry, dry and dry, there are uh, several ways to do it. Uh, so, but that's one of the things we all need to learn, especially this one. Okay, so I have, I started at, um, this painting, as I said to Eric, I wanted to show, create the harvest scene today. And since um, I don't have enough time to complete a painting, I started a little, a little bit. And then I'm going to paint on it. But right now, um, if the paper is dry, so I'm going to just wet the area where I want to um, use wet and wet technique. So this oh, is I hadn't seen brush. that before. I've, I've pe seen people wet the whole thing or spray it, but I've never seen somebody just wet where they want to work. Why do you do that? Oh, so say that again, Eric. Sorry. What, uh, what is the purpose behind wetting just an area you're going to paint? Oh, so that um, the paint doesn't spread all over. Okay. Because the, if that happens, you lose control, and then and maybe depending on the color you're using into the wetting wet, um, you know, you may not, not want to see the color in that area and uh, so in the different area. So you don't want to wet that area uh, just to uh, avoid the risk of that particular color to go into that area. So really, you have to know what, what color you want to use in here and what color you want to use there. So it's good to have a color um, reference uh, before you begin. And um, but of course, it's always fun just to experiment and see what happens. And, but um, this way, if you just strategically wet the paper, you can sort of control the flow. Um, yes, you do uh, control the flow. So I just waited this uh, area, and then I'm gonna just drop the paint. Um, this I'm using the raw sienna, and this is a pumpkin patch. And, so I'm going to use a different color as well. But first, this. I'm using this Chinese brush to do this wash. So since I'm waiting, I uh, waited the paper first, and color gets diluted on the paper. So it's, um, it's going to look very transparent. And I also you, you, uh, chose a transparent pigment. To me, transparency is very important, although I do use some opaque colors. So the pumpkins. So I just painted uh, the dirt part of the pumpkin uh, patch. 
but the pumpkins I'm dropping in this orange. I didn't draw everything. I don't always draw everything. But I think at this point, I know where I want to see pumpkins. So that's why I'm putting the oranges. But if you notice, like this pumpkin and this pumpkin, I didn't know what the paper behind them. So that it created a more controlled hard edges. Yeah. Right? But other pumpkins, I, I'm dropping this color into the wet area. So the paint spreads and runs. So two different types of uh, look in the pumpkins. I think uh, the, the painting will look more interesting, even if you're painting the same thing, if you show them differently. But you don't want, especially the wedding wet, since you have to kind of lose control, um, you have to keep an eye on uh, the, what's happening until the paint gets dry actually and lots of accidents happen at this stage and but no need to feel pan uh, no need to feel panicked it's, you just have to enjoy it and keep an eye and if the paint spreads too much then you have to take action so i'm putting a little bit of a different color um it's not just orange in the pumpkin pot so uh, the, the leafy pot whoops that was an accident actually the paint just dripped from my brush. Do you have a reference so, photo on this? On it? Are you using a reference photo or are you just doing this out of your head? Oh, this is uh, actually, I'm, um, I painted this uh, place a few times. So I'm working from memory. I do this a lot, Eric. I, I do take a lot of photos like uh, many other people do. But more and more, I rely on my memory and my impression and then initially when i do a drawing i may be looking at the photo but most of the time i stop looking any after that so when i actually paint uh, i just work with the impression i have in my mind so this one since i have experience painting there and i visited this uh, particular pumpkin patch and um, you know several times especially when my son was young I have good memories. Memory training is a great thing to develop as an artist. I agree, especially uh, for plan air. But I think I, I can say this by painting plan air a lot. And I've been painting plan air uh, maybe 15 years. And it trained me to develop uh, the, the memory uh, because you don't really have much time uh, to paint. You have to finish quickly. So you look at the subject and you have to memorize and, you know, what you're going to paint right after that. And then we don't, we don't see as many watercolorists painting in plein air as we do other mediums. What, um, why do you think that is? And what, what would your encouragement be to people uh, about getting out and painting plein air? Well, that's uh, what I, um, just what I was saying. I think uh, you will really develop the, the skill, the memory skill. Uh, that's important. Uh, even when you're a studio painter, I think it's important because you don't want to be just keep, uh, and you don't want to just keep looking at your reference. You have to spend more time looking at your painting and just ask yourself, well, what does this painting need for me to finish so you can move on uh, quickly? And I think uh, especially watercolor and then if you're trying to uh, create a kind of impressionistic look, uh, you have to paint fast if you paint slowly you get a different uh, feel in your painting which is great too but especially the loose look um, that's what i like uh, i believe uh, speed uh, is one of the important factors so to be able to do that then uh, well to paint fast means i i think uh, you are able to make quick decisions so um how to do that i think uh, you know, you have to, uh, yeah, to develop the skill, observation skill first, and then you have to make it, um, you know, um, a prediction almost. So what's going to happen next? Uh, and then the memorize quickly what you just saw, and then predict what's going to happen next, and then a work from both sides almost. Uh, but that can be overwhelming in the beginning. But I think. Uh, 
I was not really aware of that's what I was doing. But looking back, uh, 15 years of experience in planning painting, I think I sort of developed that uh, skill uh, by going out uh, and paint a lot. And of course, and I got discouraged many times, but I never wanted to quit. So it was always a great learning experience. Hey, even a bad day of painting is a good day. Oh, yes, I agree. I always say, uh, as long as you learn something, you, you win. Uh, we shouldn't worry too much about the painting result. Of course, we want to go back, you know, go home with a good painting, but it doesn't happen all the time. <clears throat> Do you have a preferred brand of papers and colors, brushes? Yes, I like uh, Fabriano, and also I, I like Arches. And then I used uh, several other brands um, before, Waterford and Windsor Newton. They're all good. It works for me. But I always tell my students, uh, uh, you really have to find a paper that works for you because each paper is different. And um, because the manufacturers have a different uh, way of making. Uh, so it's really important for us artists to try and test the products we use. And not just for paper, you know, pa uh, paints, brushes as well. And it takes time to learn. So I always give myself at least three months when I get a new product uh, to test it. And okay. uh, Hello, Netherlands. Yeah. Hello, England. Hello, Kazakhstan. Um, hello, uh, um, Niagara Falls, Sweden, oh, Quebec, San Francisco. Well, I won't start naming state, state, the states because I'll get in trouble for not mentioning everybody. Great to have you all. So I did a, well, it still looks a little abstract, uh, but I wanted to show you the wet and wet techniques. Uh, so I first dropped in the colors of the dirt and then the, the colors of pumpkin and the leaves. And then in the, after that, I put some shadows. Of course, it's not finished yet. But uh, this this way, uh, the paper is still wet uh, where, I, uh, where it initially. And because uh, the subsequent uh, steps and I went and dropped in colors, so those colors are also heavily diluted. So in, in, in uh, essentially, I kept adding paper, uh, paper water to the same area. So that's why the paper is still quite uh, moist, not terribly wet. If uh, I don't really advise to paint uh, on the paper that is too wet, because, you know, as you can see, the paper buckles a little bit. So it's, uh, it becomes more difficult to control the flow. Of course, um, it is water, we're dealing with the water. So it runs from the higher uh, area to the lower area. So you really have to make sure once you start seeing the paper buckle, um, you have to really make sure that the colors are staying where you want to see them. And then if, they're too, if there's too much on it, you have to remove um, using tissue or the brush, clean brush or tissue, or by actually tilting the paper. That's sometimes I do uh, by tilting the paper, by holding the paper. That's why I like uh, keeping the uh, the paper um, not really fixed to the easel or to the, the painting surface so that I can hold the paper in case I have to. So the control, uh, yeah, it is uh, interesting that we don't want to control, uh, especially the impression impressionists. <laughs> we want to let things happen almost. Uh, the on the canvas or paper, you don't want to control too much uh, because that creates a different look and we're not after that kind of look. And, well, and, what's interesting uh, is that, you know, your focal point is sharp edges and uh, everything else is kind of blending off into the distance. And so it really is drawing your eye to the focal point. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, so this, uh, I think uh, I can keep going, but it's uh, almost done this part. I wanted to create a more abstract look and the, and the pumpkin pads. And another technique I wanted to show you, it's called a negative painting. And that is also very important, especially for the light, uh, because um, to capture light, I'm sure all artists uh, uh, think about that, how to do that effectively. But I think in watercolor, negative painting is one of the, um, the good ways to do that. So negative painting means you paint around the shape, right? So this is uh, something I wanted to show you. Maybe I'll use the top parts. 
so there's a barn behind this uh, these people. Right now, may, you may see the people, but not very clearly, right? So by placing this color uh, behind one of the people working on in the pumpkin patch, uh, you will start see the shape more clearly. Yeah, this is uh, the farmer, but actually a father of a little boy next to him. He has a straw hat. And then maybe I will give him some clothes and like this. Sri Lanka is watching. Dubai oh, is hi. watching. Um, hey, everybody. Egypt. <laughs> Philadelphia, Wonderful. that's Wonderful. Somebody asked what kind of um, very popular. tripod or setup do you use? Uh, I, when I'm in the studio, I have a tabletop easel. Uh, but today I'm uh, painting on my table, uh, just flat table. And then what about uh, when you go outdoors? When I go outside, I use uh, plein air easel, for, especially designed for watercolor race. Uh, you have a it's called plein air pro. You use? Uh, actually, I use that inside as well sometimes. So I did a little bit of um, negative painting uh, here and there around the buildings. Over there, I placed some uh, trees. So by placing darks right next to the light, that's how we make a contrast. But if you do a negative painting very well uh, by placing dogs around the lights, uh, you can create a very dramatic effect. So that's, but actually uh, I did both uh, the negative painting and positive painting. So here is a positive painting for the barn, but here it's a positive painting for the palm tree. But either way, uh, you can create a contrast. But I think a negative painting is, a little bit harder because for obvious reason, because you have to go around the shape and the painting very carefully. And uh, it seems like uh, um, the people, that some watercolors uh, avoid doing that because it's harder, but it's really worth uh, trying. But again, I think in a painting, you have to show different techniques. So if you have too much negative painting or too much positive painting. To me, it's not well, well balanced. I like to see both, uh, and I try to do both in my painting. Hello, Belgium. Hello, Norway. Hi, everybody. Northern Ireland, Austria. Wow. Oh, this is so much fun. Well, your program is very popular, Eric. <laughs> well, it's you. They're tuning in for you, not for me. No, they follow you. We all do. And I really thank you for doing this. Uh, so uh, every day, really. Somebody said you use in plein air pro easel in the field. Is that right? Yes. Yes. I just and got I one of those. It's a, wonderful, it's a wonderful product. As a matter of fact, I just ordered parts for a second one so I can have one at the lake and one here. Yeah, actually, I have several. Uh, there's always so one in my car. I don't particular products, and I, I try them all, and I like them all. Every one of them is different. but Yeah, but this one is especially made for watercolors. Uh, it's uh, very good. I mean, they thought of everything we need. Watercolors has a special need. Needs. Well, the only thing they haven't provided is uh, somebody to carry it for me. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> That's something. Maybe I'll talk to them. <laughs> yeah. I need a I need a Sherpa. Well, I'm sure you have, you will find it out of the volunteers. Yeah, guess, well, uh, my kids my my kids should be volunteering. Hello, Scotland. Um, that's what kids are for. But unfortunately, they're in college. I mean, fortunately and unfortunately. Uh huh. Well, can I volunteer? <laughs> I know you travel to all these uh, exotic places. Yeah, you know, it's funny. We, we I was at Full Color Week, and 
somebody said, you know, you need, you really need somebody to kind of be your assistant at all these events. I'll come to all of the events. All you got to do is pay for me to go to the events. It's like, yep. See? Yep. Well, I'd be happy to be a volunteer. <laughs> a lot of people yes. are trying to get into that Russia trip. Yes, we... I do travel a lot. At least I used to before COVID. Uh, I, I miss that part. Um, it will return. I, I, I'm sure. But right now... Uh, Hello, Chennai. I don't know. In, India. Yes, but I, I do... I a little donkey. Yeah. Uh, but I do enjoy meeting artists online as well. That's uh, something I never thought uh, I would like. Uh, but it's really fun. I made a lot of artist friends, actually, in the last uh, several months. Um, artists are I, such wonderful people. They tend to be happy people. Yes, I think so. I, we, we're doing something we love, so how can we be unhappy? Yep, that's right. Yeah, so I uh, did a lot of a wedding wet right here, um, but I wanted to do uh, something a little bit different. So I worked on the dry paper in the background and also the figures as well. And this way, this painting has a little different look. Uh, but uh, again, I don't want to have two, two different types of paintings in one. So even here, I, I, it was a little br blurry and more abstracted. But I wanted to add a little more definition, which I will do a little bit more of, actually, to, oh, to finish. Piece. And uh, in the background, it's uh, there's a there's more harder edges. But in behind it, what I did already before this demo, I'm showing the farther, uh, the distant distant area. I'm showing more soft edges. So together, I I think. Uh, um, you know, that this paint, well, this part of a painting has a coherent look um, in, in terms of edges. And I really believe it's the edges that create a different mood in a painting. So this painting, this scene can be definitely painted in a totally different way. So more harder edges or more softer edges or more different kinds of edges. And, uh, and also cutters, too, they contribute in creating different types of mood. Um, but I wanted to talk more about edges today, so I'm going to just cons uh, focus on that. But it's always my goal to create a balance in my painting. And uh, as long as uh, it's there, uh, when, I, uh, when I try to decide if my painting is finished, as long as there's a nice balance in a painting, I know it's uh, quite finished. Or at least I can just put down my brush and then look at it tomorrow. And then maybe another day I'll find something else to add if my painting needs more. So I'm the watching the comments, everyone. Somebody said the Dutch word for easel or, the, is, or donkey is easel. I don't know if that's true. I have to have somebody chime in on that. Uh, you guys mm -hmm. make sure that you leave comments because uh, tomorrow you could win the uh, Plein Air Magazine apron, uh, which is always nice anywhere in the world. And it can be on the live or on the replays because we check all the comments. Wonderful. Okay. So, yeah, I... Um... I, I'm only showing a part of a painting, but it's an important part of a painting. Absolutely. And uh, the rest of the painting on this side, uh, I have more pumpkin patch and uh, I don't mean the, the same, same kind of feel. But it's a focal point. And uh, yeah, focal point is important. And I think every painting, I, that's what I look for when I look at a painting. So that's what I try to do in my painting as well. Um, how do you get those white spots in the in the background? It looks like you just dribbled water on them, or how did, did you? Right, like like this. Yeah, I splatter. Um, when you flick a brush, um, they put a little bit of water inside the brush, and you just move your brush quickly like this in this motion, and the water gets uh, released. And then 
the lens on the paper to create that kind of effect. But that has to be done when the paper is a little wet. Yeah, so that's water. Dry, that's just water with no pigment in it on top of something that already has pigment on it. Right, right. So I, I did a wash using a little color. And then on top of that, before the paper was dry, I splattered. It's, uh, it's another technique called the splattering. And and then, of course, I did I just did a few minutes ago in the pumpkin patch where you see a little dots. By this time, I used a little bit of color. So you don't always have to use just water. You can do this with the color as well. All right. But the important thing is to do that at the right moment, meaning the paper, when the paper is slightly wet, not too wet and not too dry. So timing is very important. Okay. Hello, France. Welcome. Yeah, so I think um, this, you know, by working little by little in the pumpkin patch, and if I feel uh, if my the whole painting is a little bit more definition, I can um, do the negative painting actually for the pumpkins. I darken around the pumpkins. So, especially where I see the orange, I have a little bit here, a little bit there. So I can do a negative painting to create more pumpkins, even though I didn't draw them. I don't really draw everything. I like finding shapes this way uh, as a painting uh, nearest the end. If well, I I, feel, that's what I like is that you haven't, the temptation would be to draw a full circle around each of those pumpkins instead of just, you've got little spots where you've got an edge. That's, that's mm -hmm. really very pleasing. And your brain says that's a pumpkin. Right, right. That's uh, that, you know, I think an important thing, and and I, and I always try to keep that in mind. And don't don't paint it literally. And uh, and of course, I'm not interested in doing that. But sometimes we have to really allow ourselves to to be very creative, right? So we don't really have to be slave to what we see. We are making our own scene in our painting. So even if it's not there, um, you, you can add things. Or if you don't think uh, you don't need a certain elements in the scene, you can eliminate them. So the editing is another thing uh, I will be talking about in uh, the plan, uh, my demo for what I got alive, because that's uh, one thing we should do as, a, as artists. We shouldn't feel, uh, even we shouldn't even feel that we have to paint just because it's there. That's a tough thing, and especially in plein air painting is the, you know, you, you find two or three things that seduce you that make you want to paint them. And yet if you have more than one focal mm -hmm. point, you're going to mess mm -hmm. it up. Right. Right. Yes. You use that interesting word. It seduces you. <laughs> yes. Maybe Sometimes I have to fight the temptation, um, but it, and ultimately I, I learned uh, to ask my for a question, do I need this in my painting? Do I like it? And I just have to be honest. If my answer is no, I won't paint. So, but to, uh, being honest, that part, and I, I, I have to admit, I didn't do it in the beginning. And I almost felt compelled to paint just because it's there. Um, but I don't know now uh, why it was so difficult for me to say no. Um, right now, I, I have no problem. <laughs> I think I changed. And how how did I learn uh, to say no? I don't know. I well, think you probably I, have to do a lot of bad paintings. Maybe. <laughs> <clears throat> maybe that's the reason. I think the hardest thing for me is to abandon something that I've fallen in love with. You know, if I see something in a painting that I just know isn't working, but I've spent a lot of time on it. Oh, I know what you mean. Yes, it happened to me a lot. And also, uh, you start out, and then because you think it's it's a really perfect view, and then you know this is a brand new situation, and as and it gets better and better as you paint, and you feel compelled. To, I mean, you want to change your painting too, <laughs> as you see in front of you it gets better and better, especially the light. That's when I feel very. Um, uh, tempted to change my painting. But this too, I have learned because I ruined my paintings many, many times. 
um, by changing <laughs> the light in my oh, region. So I think it was Don Whitelaw who was on recently, and she said sometimes I'll keep I'll, I'll have a a sixteen by twenty with three or four canvases taped off. And that way, rather than the temptation of painting something else I see into the painting, I'll just go ahead and start another painting and, and do mm -hmm. a different view. That way mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm scratching that itch. Mm -hmm. And if you're right, like, that's, uh, that's, what is, that's excellent. Uh, yeah. I like that. Uh, but for me, uh, again, the plan air, if I see the scene developing and improving, actually, I just take a photo and uh, just, um, you know, that day, I can't do that painting. I just work from for if I really want to paint that, um, the different different light. Uh, at least I have photo reference. Or yeah. I, I would try to go back to the place if it's possible another day, um, a little bit later maybe. So that way I get to paint from life. So, but I just learned um, it's not advisable to change a painting once you start with a plan, certain plan, especially I think it's um, for the watercolor. Very difficult to change, uh, change the values actually. And I, I kept saying light, but it's really about the values. So something, especially something that's dark, uh, um, you know, I mean, something that's light, it should be light. If you're already dark in there, uh, you can't really change it back to light. That's very difficult on the watercolor. So I always make sure my, uh, that I don't make the mistake and I tell my students, um, you gotta save light. And you, you can all, almost always just think about that aspect uh, throughout the painting process and not worry worrying about anything else because that's really more people aspect. watching from India, by the way. Uh, I know there's a big water watercolor uh, popularity in India. Here's a question from Warsaw, Poland. Uh, it says, can you tell why sometimes the scene finishes looking like the interior of a film set studio? Not sure exactly what that question means. Yeah, I don't know what it means. So. I, get, I think that's a compliment. Oh, well, thank you. If it is, I appreciate that. If it's not, Oh, well. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I'm happy to answer any questions, but uh, just, I don't know how to answer that one. So yeah, yeah. maybe, maybe, uh, maybe that person could define that question a little bit more for us. Uh, okay. Rosso common. That's hello from Rosso common. I don't know where that is. This is very inspiring. You're Thank doing you. a good job. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying it. And when when uh, when you're on on watercolor live, you won't have to. People won't have to listen to me making my comments. So, are you? What are you doing now? You're going in and putting highlights in. Oh uh, yes, uh, just adding uh, fun bits. Actually, then you know I don't really have to do the, those little things at the very end. I call the finishing touches. And are but, you using an opaque white for that? Yes, I have um, titanium white in my palette right here, which I don't actually don't want to use. But in case uh, I really have to, I want to, and it's always there. Uh, although I try to make my the, the, my painting look as transparent as possible, okay, uh, which I, I I prefer. But sometimes opaque. Uh, actually, I, I did I did use a little bit of opaque colors, and that like in some of the greens, and also I don't know if you can see some uh, splatter. Uh, I added at, at towards the end. It's also opaque color, and of course, if I have a white, uh, I can mix a different color to it to make um, a different opaque color that I don't have. So it's very useful. Uh, but uh, like I said, once you lose the light, uh, like here, I mean, I don't really need it. But if it's there, maybe uh, if I feel it will make the painting look better, uh, I have a way. So yeah. I don't really yeah. mind yeah. using yeah. opaque or white color this way. Yeah. Well, fabulous. Uh, well, we've learned that Rose Common is in Ireland. I've learned something new today. Uh, hello to Mexico, Calabasas, it looks like. Uh, thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. We're here every day at 12 noon 
on uh, Facebook, noon uh, New York City time, Eastern time. All right. Well, we got about uh, we got about five minutes left, Keiko, and I'll just let you. Now you're laying in a little bit of shadow. It looks like. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I may. Well, I won't be able to finish. Uh, it's a much uh, bigger painting. I'm only showing a part of it. Um. So, but the important part. So, I hope uh, I, I'm glad if you enjoyed it and if it was useful for you. What Any brand tips, of paint are these? There's a Holbein sticker there on the easel. Is that Holbein paint? Um, no, actually, my paints are mainly from Sennelier. Sennelier. I do have one color from Holbein. Okay. Yeah, my palette is Holbein, actually. Well, my paints are Sennelier. And I love Sennelier because uh, it's uh, I, I think it's it's perfect for planner painting, especially because it's honey-based. It doesn't get totally dry. That used to be a problem for me uh, when I used a little, uh, I mean, different brands. And sometimes uh, it got dry too quickly. Um, so and I you, found are myself. The paints that you're using uh, uh, tubed watercolor paints? Yes. I prefer uh, squeezing fresh paints out of tubes. So uh, these are all from tubes. Okay. And then whenever I run out, I add more. But usually, I let it dry a little bit inside like this, and then travel. Um, I close the palette and I travel with it. So um, this way, I think and I, I have enough to make maybe two or three paintings, but it depends on the color. Some colors I use a lot. So maybe I, I may pack a few tubes of paints, um, my, you know, very common colors for me. But um, yeah, it's very um portable uh, and you don't really have to worry about uh, them drying too much and yeah and well, they... I, I, I'll tell you something that that's been really on my mind lately is that I, I always carry a small watercolor set not even that mm -hmm. big uh, in my suitcase at all times because there are times when I just don't even think to bring paint I might be on a business trip or something uh, but I, I really have decided I have to double down and really learn watercolor. And that's one of the reasons that, that I think watercolor live is going to be so good for me is because I, you know, I tend to be an oil painter, but there are just times I don't want to carry my oils or e mm -hmm. even a, a oh, bunch of heavy tubes. Yes. Watercolor is the best, especially for traveling. It's so much easier. Um, and cleaning. Um, I mean, you just have to wipe. That's all. <laughs> well, switch your life. I'm going to take a group to paint in Switzerland. That's that's one of the next things. Oh, that's exciting! Yeah, yeah. What I what I need people to do is in the comments, you need to put where would you like to go as a group to go painting, and uh, I'll I'll gather that information and then, uh, but don't put it down if you're not going to go. If you if you say okay, I'd go with you if you did a trip to name insert here, and maybe maybe we could get uh, Keiko to. To go with us to to lead us. Oh, I love to. So I can send in the request. And, uh, help us discover Japan. That would be fun. Oh, actually, yes. Many people told me uh, that's uh, one of the places they dreamt of going to paint. I'll be happy to help Eric if you're going to plan one. Carry carry the bags. I know. I guess. Yes. <laughs> Switzerland and Norway. Switzerland's coming up. Yeah. Egypt. All right. Wow. Yeah. This is really great. Well, how about you come back on camera and we'll just. Okay. Do a quick, All right. Uh, yeah. That's fabulous. Thumbs up. Applause. Thank you. Maybe I'll show you this, my studio a little bit. <laughs> oh, let do a quick. Let's do a quick view of your studio. Yeah, I just finished the the commission piece, uh, the vineyard, and. It looks like your living room. Is the studio your living room? Well, it's both. Uh, yeah. Whenever I have guests. Nice. <laughs> looks like an old 1930s bungalow. Oh, thank you. Well, it's going to change. I'm trying to, I'm going to change maybe over the holidays a little bit. So. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, uh, thank you, Keiko, for doing this today. Um, 
So what do you tell me what your thoughts are about this this group of people we've put together on Watercolor Live? Have you seen anything like that? Um, I, oh no, this is the very uh, the first and very exciting events for the whole watercolor community. So thank you so much for doing this. It's really exciting. You're really putting us together and, and make a huge event. So um, well, but the watercolor community is very close knit. Uh, but there are people who don't know us, so I think uh, it's it's really great. Well, I and, and I think the other thing, uh, one of my goals is that uh, a lot of artists have told me some things that they would like to overcome in the watercolor world. You know, for instance, there are some galleries have have old school thinking about watercolor. You know, because they they think that it's fugitive, but of course the colors aren't fugitive anymore. Or mm -hmm that uh, they have trouble selling things under glass. And of course, a lot of watercolors aren't even using glass anymore. So there's a lot of, I think there's a lot of things we need to overcome as, uh, as a group, as an industry, if you will. Mm -hmm. And I think getting everybody together and something like Watercolor Live, we get the community together. We have these breakout rooms. People can talk to each other, get to know artists from all over the world. We have painting together at the end of every day where we're all on one big giant call. It's, it's going to be a lot of fun. We'll have, I've seen something you can paint. And uh, so we're excited about it. So I'm so honored that you would be part of the, the faculty of the very first. Oh, I'm so honored. Online. Thank you, Eric. Well, thank you for doing this Keiko. And I want to remind everybody that Keiko will be on today at 3 PM. Uh, we'll be giving a sample of her video. Uh, she has two videos with us. Uh, she's got uh, the video Storytelling in Watercolor, uh, and the other one is called Painting Sunlight, and she'll be on YouTube and Facebook at Streamline Art Video. Just look for Streamline Art Video. She'll be doing Storytelling with Watercolor, uh, parts of that video and interview today at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, New York Time. So Keiko, you got a busy day because I know you're going to be on there answering questions too. Thank you for doing this. No, it's always a pleasure. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, everybody. All right. Thumbs up. Applause for Keiko Tanabe. I, I want to thank you guys for tuning in. My name is Eric Rhodes. I'm the publisher of Fine Art Connoisseur uh, and Plein Air Magazine, Streamline Art, where we do all kinds of things for artists. You know, we have retreats, we have magazines, we have online virtual events. And of course, the big one coming up is Watercolor Live. If you book before the 6th of December, you can save 100 bucks. It's relatively inexpensive to attend. And Nice thing about it is unlike where you come to one of our live conferences and you got to buy a ticket, plus you got to get a hotel and airfare and rental car and all that other stuff. You don't have all the thousands of dollars of expense and you can, can do this in the safety and comfort of your home. You don't have to worry about it getting COVID from anybody. And we've got uh, in, incredible lineup of the world's best. <clears throat> I don't want to mention all the names, but you should go back and look at watercolorlive.com. Thank you again for watching today. I will be here tomorrow at 12 noon, like every day, God willing. And so have a terrific day. Make sure you leave a comment so you can win a prize. Uh, and also make sure to tell us where you would like to go on future trips. I'm taking a group uh, to Russia on a plein air painting trip for two weeks in September uh, next year. And uh, I have a, an event in the Adirondacks and we'll have a fall color week in the Adirondacks this year, but we will be doing more events. Now that my kids are in college, I'm free. Yay. All right. Keep your head in the game. Stay positive. Stay upbeat. Do something you love. Do not let the news bring you down. Last night we were watching the news and we were like, oh, this is awful. And so we uh, we put we put on, we, we started watching uh, uh, a, uh, a series called Schitt's Creek and uh, or Schlitz Creek, something like that. <laughs> I don't want to get any bad, uh, bad language in here. Anyway, it was so funny and it was fun just to laugh. You gotta, you gotta take care of yourself and laugh. And this morning I had the music on, I was dancing around the studio, just grooving to the tunes and it just makes you feel so good. And so if you're, you're finding yourself feeling a little down, you've got to be deliberate. You got to do things that make you feel upbeat, do what you love, try some new things. It will be good for your head. I will see you tomorrow at 12 noon. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.